Welcome everyone to this live recording of our Quarter Tone series. My name is Mikey Mhenna. Today's special guest is the wonderful and talented Adnan Gibran, a wood player and composer. Uh, he was born into a family with a deep-rooted passion for music and oud making. His father, Hatem Gibran, uh, is a, the, a third generation oud maker, and uh, he plays along with his brothers. Um, who together with Samir and Wissam form the, the uh, Jibran, Le Jibran Trio, Le Trio Jibran, excuse me, whose debut performance was in 2004 in Luxembourg, in the Luxembourg Gardens in Paris. Since their debut performance, Adnan has traveled the world performing at various renowned festivals, theaters, and music halls, including the prestigious Carnegie Hall, Radio City, uh, Radio City Hall, Olympia in Paris, and many, many more. He's performed all over the world with the trio, releasing many albums, and even including his own uh, debut album, debut solo album, Borders Behind Music. The trio, including Adnan, has composed uh, fil music for films that have won many, many prizes. They have been chosen to compose music for award-winning and Oscar-nominated documentaries and films such as, uh, such as, sorry, the one I wanted to read. Um, the uh, Five Broken Cameras, which came out in 2013. He has collaborated with uh, uh, artists such as Mahmoud Darwish, Darwish Dahir uh, Youssef, and have featured uh, as a guest performer with Ibrahim Malouf, uh, Rodrigo and Gabriela, and many, many more. Adnan, thank you so much for joining Africa Conversations, or Quarter Tones, excuse me. My pleasure, thank you. Shukran for this uh, beautiful invitation and uh... And an opportunity for me as well to be meet um, friends and and fans and talk to you as well. Yeah, absolutely, the pleasure is ours. So, Adnan, I want to. I guess the most uh, the first question really is, where are you calling from? Just uh, give us a little sense of your perspective right now. Where are you calling us from? I'm to, calling from my studio in my house, uh, my home studio in, around London. I've moved to London seven years ago. I arrived in 2004 for the first time out of Palestine to France. And for 11 years, I lived in, um, in Paris. So I basically, I'm a third Parisian uh, and 100% um, Palestinian, but now I'm living with my family here and kids in London. Great. So you are a third London, a third Parisian, 100% Palestinian. So you're 167%. Uh, probably, let's let's say third, but I don't want to be be third London. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, I, I I I would be happy to go to Wales. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So I want to ask you um, about. I guess the most striking thing um, about you is, uh, or the thing that comes across first is that this is a family affair for you, you know? Um, mm. And not only insofar as there's a trio, right? There seems to be numbers. Numbers are a part of the way you think, the third this. Um, but this is, you're a part of a fourth generation. You're the fourth generation of the law of a family tradition dating back to 1876. Your great-grandfather, Deeb Gibran, uh, started making hoods. Yeah. Um, do you have a sense of why he started doing this? Uh, why? Wow. I have no idea, to be honest. It's just uh, the same like if you ask me, why do you know how to draw? Um, I think it's something that I've inherited from my dad. Now seeing those three images of Deeb Gibran, Basim Gibran and, and my father Hatim, I can see actually I've never realized how much my dad looks like Deeb Gibran. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> yes, it, it's it's uh, really shocking now. I never realized it. Um, when I was 13, I started drawing. And I didn't know that my dad was was a good, good, good drawer. I mean, he's, he's a good painter and, and he's got skills. When he saw that I was drawing, I started straight, straight away drawing someone in front of me and, and like, and then he got out from uh, some old uh, bags, his drawings. And I was shocked actually that he has amazing talent. So why did I start drawing? I have no idea. Why did Deep Jubran started making drawings? I think it's something in the family that 
we have the urge of expressing ourselves differently than others. Yeah. Uh, looking as well, way back in the family of, uh, in the family tree, I discovered that um, Jubran Khalil Jubran was the head of the head of the head of the family. So wow. uh, I think it's, it's something in the blood that we need, uh, that there's a need for us to express ourselves differently than others um through art and this is how we feel we feel good yeah i was when i was reading up about you i saw a line where you said it said that you wanted to be a percussionist early. yeah um did your family slap the drum out of your hand and say oh if you're going to play an instrument you have to play oud. you're not allowed to play anything else the opposite actually the opposite they <laughs> have done for me oud until now uh oh. they, like oh to be a oud player because it's as well like uh, Basim Jubran, the second generation, that he actually was making his ouds, his instruments, his workshop was in a secret place uh, oh, wow. in, in the house. So his, his sons were not allowed to see him working because he thought that that would not give them enough money uh, mm. to do that. So my dad... My dad's house was uh, opposite, and he could see him from the window. He could see his secret workshop. This is how my dad earned a little bit of, of knowledge about it, and then he started to do it. Uh, at the age of uh, nine, I was even before that, I was interested in, in percussion simply because I felt that there's enough road players in the family. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I said percussion would be nice for me. I enjoyed it so much. Um, but then at the age of 16... Uh, what I had to play oud because Wissam left to Italy to, to study um, oud making and luthier in mm -hmm. Cripple. And his instrument was the only way for me to connect with him since we were like two years apart and we were like twins living in the house. Uh, that was my only way of, of, of getting closer to Wissam, that he's not here for months and months. And this is where my parents, they said, well, since when do you, do you know how to play? I said, well, I've been born in this family. I've been seeing you playing, discussing, hearing, listening, yeah, uh, creating, and it's impossible for me not to know how to play. Um, and yeah, uh, then the whole thing started. How I cool. started. Mm. Yeah, amazing. So let's talk a little bit about um, this idea of... Um, sort of finding your style there there aren't there isn't music written for three arrows arrows that's yeah. not a uh, an orchestration orchestra uh, orchestra orchestration style that is common yeah um how did the three of you think about composition and think about your own musical style did it feel like overkill were you playing on top of each other i mean how, how did you sort of figure out uh, um, composition the, performance yeah as I, uh, an idea came when Samir and Wissam started touring as duet in France and in Europe and the States. Yeah. They came back uh, when I was 17. They came back with the CD uh, for the trio uh, guitar players, which is Paco de Lucia, Alde Miola, John McLaughlin. And I was, I remember I was sitting in Ramallah and on the floor, Samir just put that CD and straight away it just gave me the, the shiver. This is like in the late 90s, early 2000s? Uh, when I heard it, yeah. it was literally 2002. Yeah, that's on, I remember. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, and it gave me the shiver. I was like, wow, it's, it's three guitars, three uh, heads, three ideologies, three styles of music, three personalities. Uh, technically they're really strong yeah. uh, and they're talking to each other they're composing something that is just giving shivers that is is giving emotions in the same time through through personalities you can you can hear, hear discussion and you just can can feel something yeah and sam and samir said yeah we, we could do that in in three roads especially because we are three brothers uh, especially mm -hmm. because you don't need introduction to each other to each other personality, to each other's history, to each other's vision, to each other's te techniques. I, I, I didn't really go to any school of road. I've learned 
I'm, I'm self-taught. So my preference was first Samir, then Samir and Wissam. So I've studied their personalities for years. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to do something. It was for me a lot of colors that I should not choose. So I can mm. be the. That was the biggest challenge for me. Definitely as being 17, uh, being rational, being uh, uh, in that age where I want to do everything, um, I had to challenge myself, which was, which was good for me. It was a big challenge uh, for me to deal with brothers, especially Samir that is like 12 years older than me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there are, and Wissam was in the middle, just kind of trying to help me and trying to help Samir understand my age or my my generation and Samir that has been there for a whole generation and he's created something from nothing he couldn't accept easily the fact that I'm there and I can't do as much but for me I should do as much yeah. to be able to gain my, my place on stage um, in, 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 in a fair in a fair play you're like the George Harrison of the trio yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you feel like if I um if I played a clip from 2006 from some performance uh that you've forgotten, some jam session that you guys have forgotten, can you hear who each line is very oh, clearly? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. How would you describe your own uh playing style in in uh, contrast to your brothers? Uh back in 2006 or I mean in in uh, your early earlier days yeah um i was more trying to prove myself technically back then that i was so good. A, li a little more sh showy yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um which exactly what happened as well uh, we could have seen it in in the movie in the documentary movie um i was i was in the same time now i can say it's different from now i was i was lost i was trying to find uh my personality i was really new with the oud yeah i took yeah. the oud when i was 16 and then on when i was 18 i was on stage when i was 20 i was in the carnegie home so there was a lot of pressure for me it's time it's now your time to find your personality which is reminding me actually with the fact that since 2008 was i'm starting to started to create my instrument yeah and i love no, no, go ahead. I, for the for the viewers who can't see the screen, there's this really um, very very heartwarming. As me, as the youngest brother uh, with two older brothers and an older sister, um, I could relate to this tremendously. There's mm -hmm. a heartwarming video that you posted in uh, September 2012 of you mm -hmm. going to see your brother <laughs> and asking him about this instrument. And yeah. the funniest thing is that there's a comment from you a year later in all caps <laughs> that says, it's still not finished even one year later. <laughs> so tell us where it is today. Uh, today, it's, it's, uh, I've ordered for him not to add anything on top of it because that's it. It's ready for him to start making the varnish. And it has been ready for like a year already now. Uh, but as I was saying, I understand with Sam that he's always trying to make the best road for that specific person. So he has yeah. to follow personality, has to follow vision, he has to follow uh, musical personality, uh, musical sound, music, musical uh, the, the, the need of what sound you want. Yeah. So yes, in the 2008, I was still developing my my uh, my personality. Uh, so. so he, he, he couldn't. Been. He couldn't set it because you were still changing. Exactly. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, so yeah. Um, maybe there's a good time to take a break and listen to one. Do one of the interludes, and then later on, I want to talk about uh, film and your solo album. But maybe we can do interlude number one. Yes. Let's, so let's tell go. us what what did you choose for the first interlude? Um, I'm gonna play uh, a track, uh, a theme of a track that I've composed for the trio project that it makes me uh, so proud because I've, try, I've tried to add something, a, a different harmony on the oud that doesn't exist in, in the Arabic music, but at the same time, I find it uh, in, the, in the flamenco, um, gives a lot of uh, uh, depth 
to the composition plus to the emotions, uh, which is um, Sama Kurtuba, the theme of Sama Kurtuba. Okay. Amazing. So, um, yeah, you mentioned flamenco. Mm -hmm. Would you say flamenco is one is one of your biggest influences outside of the music that you heard your parents, your you know, you heard in the family? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, that in that album there was there was Paco de, Paco de Lucia, and he was the um, for me the biggest door, of course, to to flamenco. And yeah, then I for sure. Flamenco, and I was like, hold on, flamenco sounds really oriented and then yeah. really more back back then at, at, at my age i was like okay actually flamenco is the reflection of the oriental music when when the muslims were there when the jews were there uh that combination between all those uh traditions and music um religion passion um uh, tension created such such music um, definitely coming from the oud, from that lauta, they call it laut. Yeah. Uh, to the guitar, the the tension of the strings, the tension of the the virtuosity, the uh, the need um, of the fire, I call it, of that that passion, the 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 sexual element of the uh, the passion element of the the dance uh, of the flamenco and the relationship with the man and the woman. It just like blew up my mind back then. Yeah, that was for me uh, really the, the the click. The I just fell fell in love with such music. Yeah. Do you mind picking up the road one more time and just playing the theme of that. the theme and that harmony that you were talking about? Okay. Already, I have to say that. When in, in 2007, I was the first uh, boy back then and musician ever until now to uh, to change the, um, the tuning. tuning. So originally the tuning of the instrument is classically like this. And this one is I've done it. The relationship between the the um, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth is like the guitar. So I put it down to me, and this one to C. Yeah. So the relationship starts to be more. Harmonic. So now, so it, going through all all six strings or all six pairs, what are what are the tunings? Do, yeah. Sol, Re, La, and these other ones are that I change. Me, 
and C. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And that already creates a different world of composition, different universe, different lands for comp compositions for me, which is closer to the flamenco because of the harmony that you could get up in those tri uh, strings. It's it's just like it's makes it does make sense. Um, so I yeah. started composing that track on the um, on the guitar just like this a simple opening yeah. very oriental but at the same time they do use it in the flamenco another answer question mark or hold on just back to the number one yeah, so and, uh, and then uh, so if, if if we if we translate it for a higher octave and I've put a little um, teaser note which is mm -hmm. and and that doesn't exist in the oriental music in the oriental music it's mm -hmm. it's tension uh, Basic makam is siba, and I've added on top of it the harmony of a different siba on different tonality, which is and nice. especially this this note doesn't exist in the makam, but that did create the tension. Yeah, th th these are the ways in which your non-formal training is a benefit. Yeah, exactly. because you're not you're not necessarily breaking rules that you have been ingrained in you for no. over thousands of hours of practice. And 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 to be honest, when I said now uh, that that note, which is the the fa dies and the that doesn't exist. No, I've heard it with uh, a song of um, Abdul Halim. Definitely back then, Abdul Halim has been thrown on him a lot of tomatoes. Yeah. They've kicked out of the, the stage, but today his music is recognized as the classic the classical music. Yeah, that's the... Uh, but because they were a little bit open-minded, um, they, they can... Th there are things that we should not do, but there are things that you're allowed to, to tweak here and there. Yeah. If it give a feeling... This is how we create. This is how tradition could move, could evolve. This is not, we're not killing the tradition, but this is widening uh, the borders of the uh, of the tradition. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the Rite of Spring, uh, Stravinsky's Rite of Spring caused a riot the first time they played it. And yeah. Now, now everybody has, if you study music, you have to study Stravinsky. <laughs> um, okay, I want to ask you a little bit um, about... Um, Flamenco a little more. Um, I mentioned uh, one of my favorite uh, groups, uh, Rodrigo y Gabriela, who you collaborated with. What was like? What was that like? Because I mean, for those the people who don't know about them, they're a duo, um, guitar duo that plays a reimagined version of flamenco that is, if you're listening carefully, is more influenced by Iron Maiden and Metallica than it is by true flamenco but they yeah. sound like they sound like flamenco <laughs> yeah they, they are mexican couple yeah uh 
um, who have done their great album. And in that album, actually, they've um, dedicated all their tracks to different um, musicians. So there was Paco de Lucia, there was Alde Miola, there was Carlos Santana, there was Lutria Gibran, there was Metallica, Robert Trujillo from Metallica, um, and another amazing and it, we were honored to find our names just amongst those uh crazy music. those giants legends yeah. um and then they they wanted to create their next album and they said why don't we target those who are still alive from from those uh, musicians and yes indeed they've done with um aldemiola they've done with us they've done with uh robert trujillo the track and it was it was great. They're they're a lovely couple. They're amazing. Incredible they, musicians. Yeah, 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 yeah. The 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 um, they have two skills definitely. Uh, Rodrigo comes from a, a heavy metal rock band, yeah. like back. thrashing. Yes, and still got it. And uh, Rodrigo uh, Gabriela, she's got an amazing sense of rhythm, and she developed this uh, um, techniques on the guitar with one hand that's as if she's got a, a a set of drums plus the the guitar um it was amazing to see them playing our music it well was, the thing is the, the reason why i want to ask you that is because when i'm hearing your interlude this first one you played it's so rhythmic i can hear the drum yeah. i can hear the drum track in my head exactly exactly well oud is is written oud is is uh hummering oud is uh, yeah, because you're holding the fret, you're not holding any any uh, uh, wind instrument or or yeah. arc. Um, and they, they they've gone all the way yeah. with it. They've even developed the sound system in in their guitars. There's like yeah. I think eight or seven mic inside, so every section of the the front of the guitar. Yeah, they have snares. They have they have everything basically at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a great, a great, a great experience. Hmm. Okay, let's let's get to interlude two. Tell us about what uh, what this interlude is, and uh, we'll, we'll okay. go from there. I'm gonna play something that uh, from my own album, which is a world of of composition that I do like now, which is more spacious, which is less of virtuosity. It's more thoughtful. It's more towards music for imagination, for uh, cinema. It was taken for a Chinese movie, something like uh, In the Mood for Love. I don't, don't know its name in English, but it's, uh, yeah. It, it's it's a music that was composed for, uh, with uh, a cello player. There will not be here a cello player, but I'm just, I'm just gonna play the theme, which is very simple, but very deep. Is the album Borders Behind? Yes, it's that moment when in the album board is better. Okay. Just gonna try to turn on the sound in there. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
different improvisations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. I'm just going to cut the reverb. Yes, I'm with you. So what are you thinking while you're playing that? Oh. Now I was thinking about my next album. <laughs> well, yeah, tell me about it. What are you thinking? This is what I'm going towards uh, musically in, in the way the composition. I don't want to go at, for another virtuosic album. Um, in terms of virtuosity, my show already borders behind is, is working and I, I could still perform with it. But I think um, I want to gain more the, the, the listeners, the streamers, uh, which is the tough thing. But I think I'm doing a choice and on Christmas, I asked my, my elder son, I said, what did you wish? What did you ask Santa? And he said, um, many toys, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And he said then, uh, I, I, I asked him something, but he can't give it to me because it's not something to give. I said, what? He's five years old though. And he said uh, that you stop going to concerts. And I said, but why? I love going to concerts. I, this, is, this is definitely how I make money. He's like, I know, but um, when you go, we miss you and, and you miss us. And, uh, and I prefer that you stay here. Um, therefore, I'm developing this, this parallel career, which is um, composing from home, being international, composing more for movies and, and synchronizations that will give me enough uh, income for me to make less concerts, to stay more with the family. And composition-wise, it has to be uh, different than virtuosity, different than just, you know, band, live band. And, and, yeah. and I've, I know I'm still young, but I've been doing this for 16 years now. Uh, those past two years of not going, uh, definitely I miss it so much. Definitely uh, it gave me the, 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 the understanding that I do have a reason to leave the house and, and go make concerts because there's a special connection between me and the stage, uh, me and the public, the, the, my music and the public. I need to perform. It's a need. It's not something uh, that only for money or something. No. Uh, but I could do it differently, which is what I yeah. do is, is two, three concerts per month but only the chosen concerts, halls, and cities that are career building and not only uh, money making or just, you know, yeah. being on the road all the time. Who are some of your inspirations from a songwriting perspective? Um, who you think about when you're trying to craft a new album and you're thinking to yourself, okay, this is the sound I, I'm, I'm trying to mm -hmm. tap into. Who are some of the inspirations? Uh, Vicente Amigo is a great, I think he's the second Paco Lucia in flamenco. Uh, definitely Paco Lucia in his recent last album uh, that was um, um, musically produced by, not by him, by someone else. Um, I forgot his name. Um, and now in this type of music, I do listen to a lot of uh, new classical music which is Oliver Arnold's and that thing as well comes for the, the questions who are you listening to Yeah, I'm listening a lot of new classical music uh, new classical but it's, it's, it's a weird term now yeah what does that mean new classical music uh, in your perspective what does that, what my does that mean the music of Trio Gibran definitely yeah because I, I'm trying now to compose new classical, listening to new classical. It's, it's, a, it's a simpler way of listening to classical music. It's a theme that could be repetitive um, and using traditional instruments, classical instruments uh, to express a feeling, an image. It doesn't have to be in the structure of the symphony. It can be an easy, easier structure. Uh, yeah beginning, bass, and an end. 
um, so it's it's a shorter version of of uh, a movie, let's say, of a story that you can tell it with yeah. with it. And when I'm tr- trying to compose, definitely I try to be dif- different than Trio Gibran and Adnan, the previous Adnan Gibran. And I was like, but come on, this is this is Trio Gibran basically. Because when we started with uh, uh, Majaz, let's say. Um, just doing that all the time with developing of, of, of his energy and then we've, you've got two roots are making and going which is yeah basically what they use now is a synthesizer <laughs> and sure. we use to be this synthesizer so yeah it's the mix yeah that's like i mean from a from an orchestra orchestral perspective that would be like this the swell of the violins or yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. very it's very sort of um, orchestrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm I'm listening a lot now to Oliver Arnold's Max Richter to see what are what they've given in this in this world of music. Um, and yes, I, as well, I I will I do want now to uh, make some music that is closer to my uh, son's generation. So I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, what music do you think you're never going to play? And let me give you a couple options because I'm, I'm curious about some of the things that you're like, no way. Yeah. Because it always reveals <laughs> reveals <laughs> things. So could you imagine? Uh, could you imagine making um, uh, writing uh, vocal vocal uh, music that features vocal melodies very very prominently? Could you imagine recording uh, albums played entirely on the classical guitar? No. Classical guitar, no. Um, because the way I've, I, I've seen the oud, the way I fell in love with the oud was through the revoluting guitar, which is the flamenco. Because yeah. back in the day, a lot of uh, uh, flamenco musicians, they took that guitar and they've put fire in it. Yeah. Uh, so classical guitar for me is is... Is not is not going to talk to me. Sure. I, I, I listen to, but it's not going to talk to me as as you know as as to. I could make something even more dead, let's say as music. You call sure. what I've uh, in terms of of, um, of uh, virtuosity. Yeah. But I need to um, to give depth to it. Classical guitar playing could be a second uh, version, or I mean. A parallel or a mirror of the traditional way of playing oud, which yeah. is for no. I don't want to create now today uh, what they have created before. Sure. What about the vo- what about the question about the uh, uh, writing for a very prominent vocal lines? Could be possible. Could be possible because they they can be emotional, they can be expressive, they can be without being you know. A, I listen to a lot of vocal, uh, vocalist musicians, even even like new recent music, um, and I sing with them. Yeah. Without knowing what I'm singing, I sure. my, you know the, the the words. I don't know the words, but I like what I listen. It does talk to me. Um, now, aim. Uh, I mean, I I already spoke with a, a girl that she approached me last year. Very talented voice. She's not famous but she has an amazing talent. I sent her last week, send me the track. I'm going to try and do something with it. So singing, she's, she's um, uh, Yemeni and she's from York. And I, I wish that we were going to do one track together. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's play the last track and then we will open up for questions from the audience. Yeah. So if you have questions in the audience, please type them now so you can make sure to get them in. What are we? What are we going to listen to, Adnan? Uh, we're gonna. I'm just gonna play a little nap of, of percussion and the theme of um, time. Must uh, what was the track? It's it's in the last album of Trigger Gibran. Okay. Uh, Not time must go by. It's more than once. Cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
You look like you're having fun with that one. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you play much at home for your for your family? No, for my family, no. The problem is that they 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 come and they ask me with those recent songs. Uh, can you play that for me? And I was like, I, I take an instrument. It's just three notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's quite boring for me uh, to play that that type of music. Um, it's it's different. I have five, three, and one year old. Yeah. Uh, the one year old, when I was preparing that track, he was, he started to dance on it. Adnan, are you telling me that you don't like to play Baby Shark? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> I'll see. I'll see next concert. Wow. Uh, yeah. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Um, Cool. Let, let's ask these quick questions and then we'll open it up to the question and answer. Great. Um, so yeah, what are you listening to these days? Yeah, I told you Oliver Arnold and Max Richter, uh, another two, three names that they're not famous, but in that world of music, of new classical, because I'm trying to um, um, develop my knowledge about this before being able to, you know, give birth for, for such an album. It's, it's important for me to know everything about it, to, to try to listen, to digest everything. Um, knowing that I do come actually from this world of thinking, uh, mm. but to listen to the sounds, to, to how they, they see things, the perceptions of, of the sounds and, and the mix between this, the digital music and the classical music. Yeah. Do you, I'm just curious, how would you feel about an artist sampling your music for a style of music that you're not interested in? Like, let's say some like Egyptian trap singer was like, I want to sample your, one of your songs and put a trap beat behind it and rap over it. Would you be interested or would you say, ah, I'm not, I'm not so sure. Uh, no, no. I've, myself, I've done it. Le Trio Gibran, um, the past six months we've been uh, working on remastering uh, remixing our music with uh, with i mean international remixes and there are there is one that is out there are two that are ready to be out and mm -hmm. we're on another two uh, it's it's it, it's not our project musically yeah. but it could be their project and i'm yeah. happy to, to have my music in nightclubs uh, because yes, uh, Carlos Santana has been uh, um, put and, and made remixed, and M Kaltum has been uh, remixed. Yeah. So, if we are able to, to introduce not Trio Gibran as a career, but if we're able to introduce the Oud as an instrument to younger generation in a different uh, um, recipe, 
uh, why not? Cool. Um, I've done one track at the beginning of the lockdown. I was so inspired by the lockdown. <laughs> I've done a track called Chased. And actually, I opened that um, track with all the files of my road and, and the percussion that I've used to many collaborators. So I've had like 20 versions of, of versions wow. of that track. Uh, one of them is uh, completely like nightclub music. And he just sent me an email three days ago. I then I've done I got another version of it. And would you mind if I send you my own music and you add the road on it? And I said just just send it's I do learn yeah. by doing things. Um, I don't expect Samir to do it. Uh, but me, I, I don't mind. Um, cool. There's no way to say no as long as you put your in your uh, personality in it. You're not changing yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Who would you love to shadow for a day, past or present? Hmm. Uh, I love today. Um, to 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 have a walk, to have a talk, to have a drink, to have a with Brian Eno and Roger Waters together. Cool. I did have both of them the 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 the, the honor to to be with both of them separately. Wow. Uh, I think having just having a, kind of a drink dinner together, it's it would be something. Brian Eno is just really a brilliant man musician mm -hmm. uh i went to his, yeah i went to his studio to make music together but then i found him creating a machine to um to polish stones and i said what are you doing he's like i'm trying to invent a faster machine that exists i bought that 15 pounds but i want to invent a faster machine i was like what does that have to do with music <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's like it's it's I don't know it's it's in his blood to invade to do something and to experiment yeah and that was me he reminded me his studio reminded me with who I wanted to be when I was a kid um, I was oh. creating boats airplanes uh, everything on and batteries motorcycles and motors and, and engines and things uh, lights I was um, I was sitting in in my bedroom and there would be things going down made by electro electronic things. And yes, I wanted to invent, and that is what helped me in my line, in my music. And I can see that in his, in his music. Uh, Roger Waters, because, because the person he is uh, as, as a Palestinian, I, he's Palestinian for me. Uh, he's Palestinian more than any other Palestinian. Um, yeah. And this is where I want uh, people to understand that being Palestinian today is not by blood, is not by where you come from. Uh, it's at least by understanding what we're losing because the loss today is the feeling of being Palestinian. Daily, we are losing houses, homes, because house could be replaced, but home, uh, olive trees and people. And he is, for me, a great friend and a great Palestinian. Mm. Beautifully said. Um, okay. What do people most misunderstand about your work? Everything. <laughs> uh, definitely, well, for Arabs or for non-Arabs, because Arabs, when we first started, they, they were like, yeah, but what do you sing? Who's the singer? We said it's instrumental. What, what do you mean instrumental? You don't sing? Do, what, do you want me to come for a concert that you don't sing? Uh, some, some of the concerts back then, I don't know, they were like, yeah, but why? It, it was amazing music, but why didn't you sing something for in Khartoum? We are creating our own path. So for them, it was too recent or, or it was um, too new to receive, to accept a whole show of one hour and a half, uh, only music without uh, singers. But now definitely they, they, they're getting it. 
I know that for for non Arabs, when we introduce Daoud being Palestinian, uh, they say, "Oh, so you play traditional Palestinian music?" Um, and for me, definitely not. As well, when, when simply when they name us as world music musicians, there's yeah. this genre in music, the world music. It means where it, the music of where it comes from which is Palestinian. But no, we invented our own line. Uh, and in Palestine, that music didn't exist. In Palestine, we are different than the Palestinian yeah. music. Definitely, we're not representing folkloric or traditional or um, ethnic music. Yeah. OK, this last question uh, we'll try to do quickly. And then if you have a few extra minutes, we'll do a few questions from the audience. Yeah. Um, so who would be your dream collaborator? Uh, Paco de Lucia. I've done the album hoping that he'll he'll get it uh, because I've done it as well with one of his musicians, Jorge Pardo. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was the door to Paco de Lucia just before I mastered it. Uh, unfortunately, he he left us, so it was a little oh, bit too late. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's ask a few questions from the audience. We can start with Amir. Amir, if you want to unmute yourself, go ahead. If you don't, then I can ask your question for you. It's a great honor to be speaking with you. Um, I love your music, needless to say. Um, I recently started playing Oud since the pandemic started. And I noticed that you're playing an island, Rishi, which you constructed yourself. And I oh, was wondering yes. how, how does nylon work better for you than say other materials that are out there like horn? I've seen a lot of, uh, more traditional players use, using horn. I've seen all sorts of material are out there. I was wondering how this nylon works better for you other, uh, as opposed yeah. to other things. Thank you. Welcome, thank you, thank you. Uh, first, the, the, the horn, and it's it's fragile in terms of if you wanna get, bring it to, to the right thickness, it, it could break. Um, when I play on stage, um, I don't want to have this um, um, ghost telling me that it, it might break if, if, if you're playing faster or, or harder. Uh, plastic could be too um, elastic, so it's not strong enough. So this is a mix between, I think it's, it's plastic and, and um, nylon. Basic, mostly it's, it's nylon. And I do construct it, I can show you my secret, that it just fits in my hand and it does give a different angle because when you hold your, your instrument, I'm gonna show you from this angle. When you hold, hold your, your instrument like this, naturally your hand comes to a position where it's whatever goes out of your hand is a little bit in an angle like this, like this. So I create from this one, it's hard to show you, but I create, now I'm holding it leveled, but when it comes to touch the, I'm gonna show you like this, when it comes to touch the instrument, it touches it in an angle because my hand is in an angle. Uh, it, it touches it perfectly uh, hitting. Mm. So I, I choose to have a thick, nylon and then i shape it myself to be like this curving thank you so much thank you very much thanks good luck. doesn't it's not easy <laughs> good luck thank you so much thank you maybe we'll do one more question from nadine nadine if you want to unmute yourself hello okay Thank you so much for uh, the beautiful music. I'm a big fan as well. Uh, I've been listening to you for years. Um, I started playing Oud a few years ago and um, I'm tr trying to incorporate it in a live band, but sometimes it's not just acoustic. There's other instrument and like drums, like real drums and, and it's hard to find the right pickup. There are, and I was wondering if you have any suggestions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um... To compete, I have to be honest, compete with a, with a drum that he should be full on. Mm. It's, uh, yeah. I know until now that we use, uh, th there is a possibility of having a normal pickup, but the, the quality of the sound is going to be really bad. So right. we use uh, an acoustic 
is a condenser sure it's quite a good uh vocal mic so i put it inside that gets a lot of bass but in on stage i use it only for the high frequencies to bring back the natural sound of the acoustic instrument and here we use um it's not a pickup it's a contact it's called Ishel. It's it's man. It's handmade by by a professional in France. So, but but you could send me an email. I could I could uh, connect you with that guy. Um, it's hard, it's you can't really find it online. But it's contact. So there is a space between the instrument and the mic. So it's not really getting the the um, the vibration of the wood. Therefore, it's not really pick up. So the sound is nicer than uh, a pickup. A combination between both. This one gives me the bass and the middle, and this one gives me the high. You could get in that a, a, a fair, loud voice, if you want to call it loud, next to the um, uh, drums. I think that is the best way. Cool. Great. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, Adnan, this was really, really a pleasure to hear you uh, play and hear you speak about your, your beautiful music. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Shukran Rulash. Thank you for everyone. This uh, conversation will go up on our podcast and up on YouTube in a few days. Again, if you don't already subscribe, please do so. Tell your friends about it. Um, share with anyone else who missed. And we will see you tomorrow. We have four events this week. Uh, we have a conversation about philosophy. On uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, we have a conversation with artist Aysam Kurbaj. And on uh, Friday, we have um, Viola Shafi, the author and filmmaker who wrote the seminal book about cinema from the Arab world. So everybody, enjoy your week. And Thanks, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Mikey. Thanks, Adnan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.